Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is a big corral. Uh, I would say I get the opportunity to go to a lot of corrals, and this is definitely one of the bigger, uh, better run, and of course on a historic track like Seabring. Uh, personally, my first time at this track, uh, but it's uh, awesome to be here to, to obviously get to experience the excitement of Corvette racing, but also uh, the history uh, surrounding Sebring and the racetrack. For those that don't know me, uh, my name is Josh Holder. I'm the vehicle chief engineer for Corvette. And uh, not only is this corral big and great, but there's there's some legends standing around the corral. Um, of course, Ron Fellows here uh, a little bit ago. For those that haven't been to the driving school at Spring Mountain, and I'm sure a lot of you have, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, super well run. Uh, you're going to learn a lot about yourself, and you're going to learn a lot about Corvette. And I'll tell you that we use it uh, quite a bit. We're a close partnership of theirs. Uh, as they help us test not only the, the, the outstanding capability of the Corvette, uh, but its longevity and its durability. It's obviously a very punishing environment uh, to be able to do that lap after lap. Uh, so there's been a few things uh, going on here at, uh, at Team Corvette. Uh, some of you may have heard, even though it's probably hard to hear me, uh, that we introduced the Z06 lap. And uh, it, it's been a while ago now, it seems like yesterday, but uh, we're working very hard to, to get that out, uh, to finish our final validation on that awesome machine. Just a reminder, it's got the 5.5-liter uh, dual overhead cam, flat plane crank, 8,600 RPM of titanium connecting rod fury. Uh, 670 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. Um, it's something we're very proud of, and we're getting back to our, our roots with Z06. Um, we knew we wanted to uh, do something that was uh, naturally aspirated. And if you think about the history, the recent history of Z06, uh, to be able to produce that kind of power level, uh, without a boosted engine uh, meant doing something that, that we haven't done before. And that's uh, improve that volumetric efficiency. More air is more fuel, is more power, and the way to do that is to rev the engine higher. And so that's what we're, we're doing with the LT6 and the, and the Z06. Uh, I mentioned some legends before. I, I, I have to mention Doug Vian, and for once we're not, I'm, we're not immediately following him. Uh, it's good, he's a tough act to follow. Uh, also, Harlan Charles, which doesn't really need an introduction, our product marketing manager. Same with Kirk Banyan, uh, longtime exterior design manager. Uh, also, Trevor Hall, he's a first timer in, at Sea Ring as uh, So great to have him. And then uh, a legend to us and to most others, Ed Moss. Uh, been doing body structure for Corvette for, for a long time. So I'm going to turn it over to Harlan now and uh, we'll go for the rest. Yeah, thanks, Josh. And, and um, great to be back at Sebring. I had a string of 15 in a row and then I missed the last two for reasons you may imagine. But uh, it's good to be back. Good to see everybody. I want to thank all of you who contributed to making the Corvette the number one luxury sports car in America. Thank you. And, you know, we race against the same people we compete on the showroom with, and it's always uh, gratifying. We have a, uh, we're basically uh, getting close to half of the, you know, it's basically us and everybody else, basically. You're either with us or you're against us. So, all of you are with us. So there's a lot of, you know, we talked to, uh, Josh mentioned CO6, of course. Um, see a lot of things online, the 23, that we're gonna start with the 23 Stingray. And one of the things that we're really excited about, both for the Stingray and the CO6, 70 years of Corvettes, can you believe it? It's the Corvettes, is the longest running car nameplate in the world. Uh, for 70 years, and of course, uh, we're going to celebrate that with a special edition. Um, it's available in, in two new colors. For the first time, we're doing a white pearl tricolor. 
at our factory, and we are all doing a carbon flash, black metallic, which makes everything match together. It has a special interior, ceramic leather with red stitching, red stripe wheels, edge red brakes, red seat belts, uh, horse magic, and then um, even uh, a special, you know, special things like a special luggage set comes with the car. So it's going to be a complete 70th package. It's available on Stingray Cooper Convertible, Z06 Cooper Convertible. And so we always uh, like the opportunity to want something special. And that gives us 14 colors for the factory, which is the highest we've ever had also, which is great. And there's some other new things you'll be reading about soon with Stingray. We have, there's some new wheel options. You get black exhaust tips, some new interior. You can get the darkened uh, aluminum trim if you don't like it so bright. Uh, we have a new adrenaline red dipped interior. So if you love red, everything red, that's the, that's the car. There's one right there. Some people love it. You got to get all red uh, if that's what you want. That's the material for you. So, it's, so we talked a lot about it. Z06, it of course, is the big story, but there's a lot new on Stingray as well with the new options and features. We keep always trying to make Corvette better for everybody as well. And so that'll uh, ordering and everything for Stingray will start soon. Z06 will be later this summer. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Kurt, our exterior designer guy. If you love the way these Corvettes look, give him a handshake or a hug. the 306 Arrow a little bit. So the base car trim, the car is, is at a neutral state. That's our 3.0 spoiler. If you add the wickers to the 3.0 spoiler, that will give you 650 pounds of downforce. And then if you click the box and want to go to the Z07 package, that puts the carbon fiber in. That gives you 734 pounds of downforce at 300 kph, and which is an industry standard. So we do a lot to not only make these parts very functional, but we also want to be very beautiful as well. That's also part of the balance effort that we chase for a Corvette. Good afternoon, everyone. I just thought I'd introduce myself. I'm Trevor Hall. I've been recently in the team of the for one year now. Can't be happy with the team that I've you can tell by my accent probably that I'm an Aussie or as someone referred to me out in the Quran just before as a great deck version of someone from the UK. But, um, it's my first race since being on the Corvette team and uh, very happy to be in such an iconic race. for free and maybe answer some of them coyly or uh, answer them um, with authority even though we don't have authority. So. Yeah, what's the issue with all the chips again? Are you going to have that problem again? So the question was, what's the issue with chips? There's a lot of issues with chips. You guys are from Detroit, don't you know a guy? We know a few guys, yeah. So microchips specifically, integrated circuits, You've probably heard on the news, they've been uh, quite a challenge for all consumer electronics and the auto industry is no exception. 
Uh, so we have been fortunate on Team Corvette. We have been impacted by them. It's a challenge. Uh, but um, we've got a great team inside of General Motors. That's the one advantage of having a very large company. We have a lot of purchasing power. We have a lot of reach. Uh, the chips that are available in the automotive industry, we get our share of. And the ones that we get, get properly prioritized to the world's best sports car. So we've been pretty well protected, but it continues to be a challenge and we manage it every day. Uh, so are the transmission issues resolved? So the question was, are the transmission issues resolved? <laughs> it's a tough crowd. We just talked about how great it was to be here, and you guys were tempered. Uh, so yes, uh, I don't know which or what transmission issue specifically you're talking about, um, but I will tell you that the the transmission, the dual clutch transmission in the in Corvette, is a pretty amazing piece of hardware. If you've ever got a chance to see a cutaway section of the transmission, you can appreciate the machinery that's inside that thing, the thousands of parts that have to work together to do their job. Uh, and so uh, that. That modern piece of machinery, uh, as we ramp up production, uh, it doesn't take much uh, to cause a customer-facing problem. Uh, but we've been working very hard to uh, minimize that. Uh, I will tell you that our warranty performance uh, is for the whole car, not just the transmission. It's looked at by a big team of people every single day. Uh, often, it will take one person that had a bad experience. We don't want anyone to have a bad experience. And uh, we will see something on the internet that snowballs like every single person is seeing the problem. Uh, we look at the actual data, and uh, it's 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 improving. It's uh, we we want every Corvette to be defect free. That's our goal. And so there's a lot of people that work really hard each and every day to make sure that happens. Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. I'm right here. Josh? I don't know where right here is. Gotcha. <laughs> I bought my Corvette during COVID, so I got screwed out of the driving school. Now, the truth, my wife is one of my wife's driving lessons, and she keeps in the mailbox. But is there any chance I can get a do-over on the driving school? You, you missed the driving school? It was closed. <laughs> during COVID, it was closed. It wasn't Ron. Ron Fellows was just here. I think they they made exceptions. For pay. I call first thing I call David called Spring Mountain. Okay. And, they, and I think they'll they'll let you go. So how, what what would I say? I mean, they're just not gonna, they're gonna say you got screwed out of your truck. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't say that. Just say you missed it. It was closed when you were up. You know. I I mean we make it. We made exceptions for things like that in the past. If I would go with them first, if not, come back to, to us, but I think they'll handle you. Just call them up. He's got one. Question. The question is for 23, do we have a special 70th anniversary for the, all the cars? And the answer is yes, we do. Every car will have a special interior plaque for the 70th anniversary. And then uh, Kirk here is etching all the wind rear windows personally with a 70th anniversary logo etched into the glass for both coupes and convertibles. So it'd be kind of cool. So every 23, celebrates the 70 years in its own way. I know you mentioned the expanding palette to 14 colors this year. Is there any thought you have given to changing up the colors?
color palette to potentially add a purple or a green to go more exotic? Yeah, so good question. You know, um, now that we have more colors, going up to 14, the colors you mentioned, purple, green, we, we have more opportunities to do special colors because, you know, you, can, you, you of course you always want to have your cores, you know, the, the torch red, arctic white, black, but now with all these choices, we can do more exotic car colors. That was really our goal. So in the future, you'll, you'll, you'll hopefully uh, get some that are, that are fun and exciting and uh, really make Corvette special. A lot of, you know, every color becomes somebody's favorite, you know, that we do, so. It's always, it's always fun to do colors, and we pushed hard to get the uh, our factory with that capability to do that many. And starting this year, starting this year, we did the two special for the 70th, but we'll have those slots in the future to use for others going forward. Good question. I recently had a flat tire on the C8. I got a screw in it. And I could not find anybody in my town who would fix it. I finally got it fixed. So I talked to Michelin today. And if you have that problem traveling, you can call the Michelin Service Center. I don't have their number. They were going to give it to me, but you might try that. Because it's bad if you have a flat tire. Thanks, Charlotte. Thanks, uh, Jim and Charlie. Dinner. <laughs> it's good to tell everybody in the group that they're doing that. Thank you. Hi, I have two questions, so feel free to discard which, whichever one you, you prefer. But uh, with a dual clutch transmission fluid, um, is, do you recommend putting the extra two ports in um, if you'd be doing like just a uh, driver's education school, and if so, would you uh, then leave the, the two courts in, uh, in perpetuity? Um, yeah, so um, we recommend the two extra courts for, tra for track use, but there's no negative effects to keep it in there once you add it. So thank, you thank can you. do that. And then the other one was just on oil, first oil change. Um, is there any benefit of getting rid of, or, or negative impact from getting rid of the oil after at the 500 to 1,000 mile mark the first time and then going with the regular schedule after that? We actually, we actually got our oil experts right here, our pals at Mobile One. Our best partners are here. They're going to do a presentation after us. We want us to say, So the question was, do I still need to do early oil changes, or can I wait to the for, for the first oil change? Is there any benefit left to some people doing 500 miles, a thousand? We used to have that seventh generation car was required at the 500 miles. That's not required for the eighth generation car. You can go the full oil change interval, wait for the light to come on. Okay. Guys, for the eighth generation car, the Z06, that horsepower, did you hit, is that the plateau or you guys think you're gonna shoot naturally aspirate? I'm talking about forced induction. You think that's the bar or you're gonna squeak a little bit more out of that over the coming years? It's already the highest naturally aspirated horsepower V8 ever. So we, we really squeaked it all out that we knew how to do at this point. I mean, you never say never, but it's, for now, I don't know if Josh can ring any more out of there. <laughs> yeah. Hey Josh, uh, Keith the Corvette Blogger. The uh, Nurburgring ring just opened for the spring. You guys are finishing up your final validation. Are we gonna see the car back over there for your final validation test? And will we finally see a fast lap run at the Nurburgring? Great question as well, Mr. Um, we, we don't have near term plans to go back to, to Nurburgring. Uh, we're gonna do uh, the bulk of our final validation work here. Uh, but of course, Nurburgring is a track that, that we visit, so then nothing is off the table there for uh, doing a, a what-if 
uh, that hopefully gets us a clear lap without traffic and a speed limit and all the other challenges that have come with Nürburgring lately. Um, we're proud of the work that we've done there. We did it, um, it's been almost a year ago now uh, when we were there before. And we were sort of in the middle of the vehicle development phase. So there was still calibration work going on. There was still chassis tuning, bushings, hard part stuff going on. And that's really where we extract the most out of it. There's no other track like it in the world, as everybody knows. That's why it's so sought after as the standard. Uh, but we use it really to make a better car, less about setting a lap time, which we know everybody wants to hear, and it's great if you happen to be lucky enough to get it, but our mission really is about using that track to make a better car. We're going around the table over here. If I wanted to order a C8 over a Z06, and I wanted to put the carbon fiber on it, uh, who's going to get the carbon fiber first, the CO6 or the C8? Or are we both going to get what we order? Is there going to be a constraint on this? Can you get specific about which carbon fiber you're talking about? The carbon fiber package on the inside of the car, for example. Uh, I don't know if you know, yeah. I don't know, I shouldn't bring this up, but everybody knows Rick Conti Corvette or whatever his name is. If you look at his YouTube channel, you know who he is? Oh, wow. Well. They do. Yeah. I, don't much, I don't know how much fax he has or if anybody ever misses him or if he's got the bull crap on some cars, but if I was a D06 with a carbon fiber package on the inside, C8 with a carbon fiber package on the inside, who's going to get first choice of the uh, product? Is it going to be me or the Z06 or both of us, the C8 and the Z06 customer? It will be first come, first served by the way the work is taken. But for your specific example, the interior parts that are carbon are different between the two cars. So there's not a direct competition. And carbon fiber, while it's really expensive, is not in a supply shortage. There, there's a new carbon fiber package too, which is on the display car. That's exclusive to Z06 now. So if that's what you're talking about, it's all for CO6. But there's a level one that's for all of them. So like it says, there, there are a lot of specific carbon fiber components. For top, for part, for, right, so there's a lot of separation between the two models. So most of the carbon fiber that's used. I know we have uh, two Corvettes racing here today. We have, um, well, we have two Corvettes racing at Sebring, just not at the same time. And so, um, we got Doug here. I'll play. So we have two series now. We have the World Endurance Challenge, something you see which raced yesterday. And we have the uh, G Ford GT Daytona, so we had to move classes. But in, in, in Doug, you me if I'm wrong. in order to race at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, they want us to be compete in the WEC series, which raced yesterday, and will race some races in Europe and around the world. So the best solution was cut the baby in half, we'll race one car at the WEC Challenge, which is closer to last year's car in spec, the GTE category. And then the new North American IMSA category, we had to move down to the GT Daytona class, which, which, which is a D2 car, a lot of restrictions on it to compete with the GT Daytona. So it made a lot of sense to split them apart. We have two different spec cars now. Now for the 24 hours alone, we'll have both cars again together. We had both together for 24 Daytona. So, but that's why. When will we know if, if we're going to have enough ships to make magnetic ride happen on the 23s? Is this working? It's radically. So the magnetic ride is, we're still building cars with magnetic ride. There, there's a chip that's used in the module that controls the magnetic ride that's on a constraint for global chip shortages, but we're, we're not 
We haven't stopped building MR. They're on a constraint because it's so popular, because it's a cool feature. Um, that we were worried we were going to have more people ordering cars than we had chips for. We're building as many as we can. And I mentioned before when I talked about chip shortage, there is a lot of people, and are these people working 24-7 uh, to try to get more global capacity of chips, get the, the supply of them bolstered. It turns out the chipset in the in the MR module, the master module that runs the, the MR damping is shared with some other modules in the car. So we're not only uh, prioritizing ourselves, we're prioritizing features amongst vehicles. So we haven't stopped building them. We just wanted to be very careful about taking an order that was going to take a long time to build. specifically for this car. Uh, it's a pretty tall engine that fits uniquely in a mid-engine architecture. It wasn't designed to be a global engine for the company and be able to put in any car, so it's uh, bespoke to Corvette. was how many Z06s are we going to build the first year? And the answer is as many as we can. Yeah, we are, I, I mentioned before we're in the final stages of development. Um, we're, Bowling Green is starting to build cars. We've not yet built a sale car. I think a lot of people thought that, you know, we're out driving captured test weight vehicles and things. Uh, so we promised the car later in the summer. Uh, we're working to do that. Uh, but we're not done doing that work. And part of that work is to make sure that each and every car is perfect and uh, meets our standards and your standards. And we're going to launch the car very carefully in a measured way uh, to make sure that happens. Harwin, over here, waving my hand. I wonder if you could refresh my memory about when you said the hybrid was coming out. I didn't say anything of that sort whatsoever. <laughs> so it's not my memory that's the pro problem. But as we say, we don't talk about the future, but the future I think for Corvette is bright. And um, we look forward and, hope, and we hope we're making you guys all proud of us going forward. Is the uh, DCT and the Z06 identical to the CA? No, it's it's actually a, a slight. It actually has modifications for the Z06 uh, to, ha to handle the higher revs, more power. And actually, um, some changes. We had the question before about the um, track usage. The new the, the Z06 transmission doesn't require the added fluid for track usage. That has um, two feet. 
features in there and it allows it to stay uh, oiled during the track at the higher G's and higher RPMs of the Z06. So it is very, it is related to the other DCT, but it is enhanced for Z06. It actually has also a, uh, a higher numerical final drive as well. I'll just add a little bit to what Harlan said, that final drive ratio is a 556. Um, so higher numerically, lower ratio final drive. The clutch pack uh, has an additional friction plate, so the the transmission of the LT2 is a, a five pack and a six pack, we call it. So the inner clutch is six, the outer diameter is five, and a Z06 for both six clutches. In the case of the transmission, there was rumors going around that the transmission case was magnesium. It's not, it's aluminum, but it does look different because we had to change it to handle the LT6, the, the power level, the shaking forces the engine delivers, uh, required us to design the case. And that case design change, uh, we put a bigger sump oil pan in it, and that's now why we can put enough oil um, from the from the factory without any other side effects. You do not have to uh, add additional oil later if you want to track the car. And to follow up on the question earlier about whether or not you should uh, add the two quarts uh, to the transmission to take it on the track, officially, and we describe in the owner manual that you should do that if you're going to go on a track. If you're going to do an occasional track day and you're not a 10 tenths driver and uh, uh, you don't plan to uh, put slicks on the car and really throw it around like like it like can be done, uh, you don't need to change the oil. So we don't want to make anyone think that the transmission is tender. It's not. It's a very robust device. Uh, um, it's very capable right out of the box. If you're going to use the car uh, like a Z06 is intended to be used in your LT2 and you're going to use it very often for track and you're quite a capable driver, then you'd want to consider adding the two cords. Quite a number of women on our... Actually, a woman is uh, most of our boss. Uh, I, at the very top of the company, Mary Vera is all of our boss. On Team Corvette, our program manager is a woman, and she keeps us in line. She's very capable. So there are there are a number of women on Team Corvette. Yes. We were just back here listing off titles, and they're all managers. So it's going on my theme that the women on our team are our managers, our bosses. Can you hear me? Um, engine building for the Z06. I know, like when I first, when they kind of first come out, and uh, Jay Leno did an interview with one of the uh, um, techs. He said they had uh, like 13 engine builders. Are you guys ramping up engine builders to be able to produce more Z06 engines? Uh, how many? I know that, that that'll probably be the restraint as to how many engine, how many cars you can pr produce per day. Uh, the answer to your question about ramping up uh, the number of builders at Bowling Green is yes, we are adding builders at Bowling Green. Um, we want to do that the same way we, ex you know, launch and accelerate production in the whole car. I think people are vaguely aware of how complicated a car is. We, we say, because it's true, it's the most complicated consumer product in the world. And we have a tier two, tier threes, hundreds of tiered suppliers, literally thousands of components that all go to make the car. And they all have to come together in the right way. You don't want to underproduce, like we're seeing with chips. You also don't want to overproduce uh, and build a lot of expensive hardware that's sitting. And so, as a part of that, the good part about the LT6 engine, we're, we have control over that. We're building it right in our factory in Bowling Green. Every engine is built by one skilled worker from start to finish. And we want to keep them sharp. Uh, there's a lot of training and requirements going to be an engine builder. So what you don't want to do is staff them up and then they don't. There's nothing to build or keep them fresh. So we're, we're hiring and training as our acceleration will go up. The question was how many hours does it take to build one engine? Uh, 
I won't tell you what the goal of that is, but I'll tell you that we're not done finalizing that yet. Uh, but it's the majority of a shift. It, it, it takes a while, um, but it's another reason to have one person. There's not just one person building every engine, obviously. Uh, so there's many going on in parallel, uh, but it's uh, quite uh, an endeavor. It's a very high-tech piece of precision machinery that we want to make sure we get just right. And so we'll accelerate that, like like I mentioned before on the car, when we know the quality is exactly right where we want it to be, that everything is going together uh, as you guys all expect and deserve. Charlie. Do you know when they'll open up the plant for tours? No. But I, I will tell you that we we plan to open the plant for tours. That has not been forgotten. It feels like forever. I know, because it has been. And there's been one thing after another that's preventing it. But I will tell you that uh, the new plant tour, I'm sure a lot of you have been on the new plant tour before, will be awesome. It's, there's a whole bunch, this is my proof to you that we're planning plant tours. We've done work to route the new tour in ways it's never been routed before, like by, by the paint shop, for example, where you'll be able to see inside the paint shop and, and the old shop, you couldn't do that. Uh, we, we need to get our lunches done, we need to get our people focused, uh, we need to get our supply chains up and stable, and as soon as we can achieve all of that, and we'll keep our eye on the ball, then we'll open the plant back up for two years. Uh, the pricing on the uh, Z06, somebody, you know, uh, everybody exaggerates and it's going to be around 80,000 base, some people are saying 90,000 base. You guys even have any idea what the base is going to be? We we have we have not announced pricing yet, um, so it's it's still being considered. So the answer is, do you guys even know? I'd say no. Uh, anyway, it's a we're, 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 it's a very deliberate act that we're working to figure out. We're not. It's not like we know information, we're just withholding it. It's being uh, debated and researched and we want to make sure we get it right. And there's a lot of price inflection going on. It's the worst time to set a price on something is right now. Uh, so we're trying to make sure we get it right. So the question was, are there any plans for a special celebration of the 70th anniversary of Corvette? And I assume you mean Besides the anniversary package, that's pretty special. It's like a party, not a party. How big is your place? <laughs> yeah. It was. It's tough to, you know, with the, you know, the conditions that we've had in the last couple of years to plan something big like that, like we did for the 50th. Um, we do plan to. Uh, Enjoy, you know, a lot of the events that we've done in the past, like the National Corvette Museum. We usually have the birthday celebration on the National Corvette Museum, so we'll do something special there. And um, it, it'll, um, it, it, it is a little unusual because the model year 70th starts pretty soon, number 23. The 70th actual birthday is really next year, you know, 53 to 23. So we start celebrating the model year and then we'll cap it off. So we could we could start uh, thinking about something for that. We we did do something for the 60th. We had a little celebration. Nothing like the 50th, but Sharon's here from the National Museum. She's gonna she's gonna plan a party for us. Hybrid or full EV? Is that a statement or a question? That's a question. <laughs> well, we all, all of us here, we love indoor plumbing, running water, and our jobs. So we're not really going to talk about future products. But uh, show of hands, who wants an EV Corvette? <laughs> Uh, 
hybrid Corvette. A few more. Who wants a naturally aspirated V8 that does 670 horsepower? <laughs> okay. Ask and answer. <laughs> Yeah, let's start building. <laughs> So they do have that capability to uh, to adjust the pricing, both up or down. In this case, it's up. Uh, obviously, we want um, we price we call the MSRP. So we're working uh, through that with with a lot of dealers. I think that if you shop around, the best some of the best dealers are doing that. But ultimately. Um, in the, we don't have we don't have the authority to dictate that based on you know dealership agreements and things like that you know and that's been set up for before I was born. It's a weird answer, but I hope it, you understand. You don't want to ask in front of everybody, and I want to thank all of you for the questions, all of you for coming, all of you for loving Corvette as much as we do, and uh, I'm it's really uh, proud to see this turnout here today. So thanks, thanks everybody.